taxidermy, the art of preparing, stuffing and mounting the skins of animals for display, originating from the Greek meaning, arrangement of skin. Taxidermists were also increasingly used by the bereaved owners of dead pets to resurrect them. So we ask, is taxidermy a lost art form or an up and coming craze? Some people think I just get an animal and stuff something inside it, you know, and other people might realise that I actually pick up dead animals or have people's pets stuff. So it's, it's all different, but generally I think people think we're weirdos. I do taxidermy because I, I, love, I love doing it. It's actually therapeutic. It's almost like recreating an animal again, although it's inanimate. But um, to preserve the skin for other people to see is actually good. And I do it because I'm a conservationist and I want to teach um, people, especially children, about conservation and how animals should be adored and preserved. So to preserve an animal in its natural state and show it to kids, they love it and it imprints something um, about wild nature in them from a young age and it helps to educate them properly. We were looking for someone with lots of experience, more animal variety and more clients. Then we found Sean Douglas, a taxidermist from Salisbury. Sean invited the team to come to his workshop to have a chat and gain insight into his world of taxidermy. A job's a job. If someone gives you an, an order to do a with snake as a walking stick and a fox dressed up in hunting clothes, you know, you just quote them for it. I don't know what qualifies you as a qualified taxidermist. Yes, I have got um, credits in taxidermy and competitions, but it's not like a degree or a college you go to. Van Gogh wasn't a really qualified artist. You could say it goes back as far as the Egyptians, but they used to offer up uh, small bird and animal bodies to put in the tombs. But then the oldest taxidermy around is only around the 1700s. So there's no such thing as a stuffed dodo in these museums, they're all replicas. The, be the better quality are you can buy. These are uh, acrylic, it's a plastic really. They used to make them out of glass. The glass are good, but the acrylic ones today are beautiful. So if you've got a good eye, that's the main thing I always thought. I obtain my animals in many ways. Um, the majority of wild animals come from the roadside because unfortunately hundreds of animals get run over every day and it's just a wicked waste to see them potting away. I never kill animals. Um, I don't agree with killing animals. I certainly never need to kill any animal just for the sake of taxidermy and I don't believe it's right anyway. After a short while, the crew went out for a drive with Jonathan around the Avon Valley. Sometimes I don't find anything, so then I turn le left on the Blanford Road, and, um, and then I might find some along there. Um, there's, there's always pheasants along there anyway, so if I don't get any unusual stuff, I've always got pheasants and rats and maybe a deer or two or something. After driving for a good hour, we came across our first find of the day. Bird. Nice and meaty, fresh, again he's still got rigor mortis. Undamaged, that's good for taxidermy purposes as well basically. This one's about uh, 110 pounds just to do the bird, which is a morning's work. It sounds good money, but the government body in charge, DEFRA, don't seem to like taxidermy, and they plan to increase it to about 100 pounds per bird. I have to pay 31 pounds to uh, DEFRA. I wouldn't mind if I paid the 31 pounds and it went towards animals. It doesn't. It just goes to run in the department. I never worked out who buys it, what they want it for. It's just anybody. I've delivered big cats to council houses. With one pheasant in the car 
the team carry on their venture for finding yet another casualty. He's been, he's covered in ticks that, he's been there for a couple of days. I don't think this traditional taxidermy has much of a place anymore, apart from the museums and schools, perhaps. Maybe in the future, a taxidermy is just going to be based on um, sort of weird exotic art forms. To be honest, I don't think there is much future in it. There should be. It's got plenty of legs left in it for the business. But the legislation and the laws and the bureaucracy is just killing. Everybody believes in animal rights. Animals do have rights. And you know, catching them and shooting them is, is wrong and they should prosecute them, but uh, they seem to go after the people that do it legally because we're an easy target. I don't know. I don't, both of my lads can do taxidermy, but they, they don't. I don't think uh, it's a good business, it's good money. I've made a lot of money over it over the years, but uh, I think it might die out in the next 30, 40 years at least. The art of taxidermy, although still scarce, is still at large in the more niche market. With a high demand for the more artsy side of the population, taxidermists such as Jonathan and Sean still keep the art alive. We hope this highly unique and traditional art carries on and never fades away completely.